Hello. Hi, everybody. Happy Friday evening. At least that's what it Happy is right now. Friday evening. It is. It is a little past six. All right. Yeah, so today... For tonight, we'll do this every once in a while. We're gonna come on and do a little bit of a Q&A. We do have a topic that we're gonna... Who are we? What are we doing? Well, I hope you know who we are because you're on our private page, so... <laughs> but if you're not and you're on our YouTube page... Oh, um, yeah. We are Habit, Strength, and Conditioning. I'm Coach Steph. And I'm Coach Pat. And we're in our living room. <laughs> that acts as our gym and our recording studio. Touche. Two way. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here at home. We wanted to kind of uh, open up the conversation. Um, we're getting comfortable. No shoes on. We're just hanging out at home. And we want to talk about um, just general topics that help us, um, you know, stay accountable to our, our progress or our nutrition or our goals. Um, and sometimes I feel like some of that, that um, those tips and tricks and things can um be very easily shared um, and there may be there are things that we've put to practice for a long time but um, you haven't yet yeah and some of these things that we'll talk about are might be stuff that you've heard before you've heard us say but reminders are nice and not everyone might know that so um, these are things that we've come across and we've had to learn at one point and we feel it's important to share with you so does Mara our cat over here who <laughs> is running mirror. around like a maniac <laughs> Sure. So, um, I guess today we're going to talk, well not a guess, but today we're going to talk a little bit about measuring food, the importance of measuring food. Now, if you're joining us on Facebook Live and you have any questions as we're kind of covering these, this topic, feel free to ask in the comments. We, we can't see them, so ask away. We can help you out with Whatever question you may have, uh, if you're looking at this later or have questions or topics that you want us to cover at a later date, you can put them in the comments too. That way we know what you're interested in knowing more about. Awesome. Okay, so Stephanie, Coach Steph, I'll be the interviewer to start, okay? <laughs> we gotta get it. All right, Coach Steph, what is the most accurate way to measure your food? Well, I feel like I'm in a pop quiz. Um, so generally speaking, um, there's lots of different ways to measure our food. Um, we always make sure we have a digital scale or a, kind of an old school analog scale. Um, you know, that's whether we're at home. Um, we've even found that our, uh, some of our friends have ha provided scales to us when we're at their place, um, which is nice. But we always like to travel with one as well. Um, and then I keep one if like at an office or a workplace, so we always make sure we have something to physically weigh and measure, um, at least when we can. And so beyond that, not just like having a, a scale itself, but what unit of measure we're often um, using is we're weighing in grams. And we're weighing in grams, um, not to be fancy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we like the metric system. <laughs> um, but frankly, it just it's it's a little bit more finite of a um, of a unit of measure. And so, let's say I'm measuring something that's two ounces. The threshold in a scale that's like it measures two point one, two point two. Um, that threshold is a little bit diff uh, less likely to to um, change um, as opposed to when you're measuring with grams. The difference between seventeen grams and eighteen grams is obviously. Um, a little bit easier to see on a scale so anyway it's just a little bit more finite and we like to do that so that we can be more specific and we're more regular and disciplined about um, being able to weigh and measure things yeah to add on to what you're saying to the you know if you have like two ounces and it goes to 2.1 it rounds up so after it hits that five or like that point five that's when it would go to the point one so there's that little bit of error there um, also when you're looking at like the nutrition labels, they all have grams on it. You know, it might say something like a quarter of a cup, or you might see something that says like about 10 almonds <laughs> or about this or that, but then it always has 56 grams. 
So the 56 grams is what you're actually looking at, and that's how you would weigh because that's going to be the most um, specific or the most accurate way to to weigh. And it's not only accurate, but it's also like Pat's saying on the back of the nutrition label. Um, it's all it's also the same unit of measure. So it. When we've started working um, by weighing and measuring our things in grams, it's just more applicable, so we have to do less calculations. Um, and that's always helpful when you're already hungry or yeah. feeling hangry. <laughs> yeah. And then you get used to it pretty quick. What I think is funny, though, and something that I've noticed since we've been weighing um, food, and we've been doing this for a while, it's been, it gets a little off and on, and we're on a pretty good stretch right now of both of us weighing, is when... Uh, like a can of beans will say there's three servings in this and then I'll say on the serving like there's 130 grams of these black beans and you start weighing it out and you're like god there's no way there's three servings in here <laughs> and then or our lentils this is a perfect example we get um, little bags of the lentils and they'll say like 140 grams is a serving and we, I take 140 grams out and that's like three quarters of the bag even though there's two servings in that bag so Weighing and measuring is important, and that is the most um, specific way that you will you will achieve whatever it is you're looking to to eat for that meal. Yeah. Okay, so um, we talked about having a scale. We said we carry a digital scale, but we don't actually like have it all the time. You know, like I don't keep it in my back pocket like I would keep a phone or my wallet or something like that. I don't just whip it out. I don't have anything implanted in my arm where I can put my hand. That would actually be pretty cool, though. Um, so it weighs it for me. We don't take it to a restaurant. Yeah. So we don't take it to family dinners. Yeah. So um, that said, what's the, what's a what's a good way to measure if we're not we don't actually have a scale a scale with us? That... So that's a great question. Um, there's a couple of different things that I tend to find, especially if I've spent a lot of time or I've been really regular about um, weighing and measuring. Eyeballing, I want to say. Um, can come with time, but you, we still always measure with a gram or with a with a scale at home. But if we're in a in a situation where we're not able to weigh and measure, um, your hands and your body using your body um, to help measure and estimate your you know give your best guess for different portions are really helpful. So um, you know looking at your the size of your palm the size of your fist, the size of your thumb are all good ways to um, kind of be able to eyeball and, and estimate, but with it as an educated um, unit of measure. Yeah, and if you are tracking, when it comes to going out and not having it, a guesstimate's always better than nothing. Um, I talked to a lot of you about that with when we're doing our nutrition coaching, and if you are tracking when it comes to like a MyFitnessPal or something like that, then I'd rather take a guesstimate than nothing at all. Um, but to expand on, you know, what Stephanie says is that that hand portioning um, tool, your hand's always with you, right? So you always have something that you can kind of use. Um, and to elaborate a little bit more, when we talk about hand portioning, and she was talking about her palm and her fist and her thumb. So if we're eyeballing our protein, you want it to be something about the size of your palm. You know, everyone's different hands are different sizes and usually like the bigger the person the bigger the hand not in all cases but in most cases um, that's the way it happens and so that's a good indicator of how big of a piece of meat or you know of amounts of cottage cheese if it's you know like if you're you're going that route or anything like that it should be something about the size of your palm and so if you had your plate sitting there and you kind of eyeball your Palm, the plate and that kind of thing um, it's a good indicator of how how big a, a you know like a portion should be for you for your protein so are we saying that palms are good for por protein palms are good for protein all right what would apply for like a, a starchy carb or, a, or even a veggie carb okay so I'll start with the veggie carb because that's a little bit easier so the veggie carb is going to be something the size of your fist so right there, if you have a, you know, like, like I said, talking about the plates, you put your, don't, you don't have to actually put your fist on your plate, but if you're eyeballing it, the, the fist is for uh, a veggie, like a pile of veggies. 
The Sarchi carve, I've heard two different ways. It's either a fist also, where you can do it that way, or it's a cupped hand. So a cupped hand is if I brought my hand in like this and then we're putting in the plate, it would be something that can hold into that palm of your... Not like a yeah. heaping... Not a heap, not like a huge <laughs> heaping, like, let's see how much I can stack it. And then you have like this little Mount Everest of rice sitting in your hand, but more of a, you know, like... What do you can fit in your... What do you can fit in your palm, a cupped hand there, okay? So that would be a starchier carb. And by starchier carb... We're talking about potatoes, potatoes or oh, rice. Look at that. Right over that. Right, potatoes and rice. <laughs> what are we, Elida? Of... We married or what? Um, you know, uh, quinoa or, you know, whole lentils. grains, oats, beans. you know, that kind of stuff. Lentils, beans. Yeah, all that stuff. All those starchier carbs, the things that we like to maybe overdo a little bit sometimes. What about fats? You just did it. So fats would be something about the size of your thumb. So thumbs up to fat. <laughs> right. So what would that be like? Like a peanut butter, uh, you know, like if you're looking at your plate, like, you know, maybe almonds put onto your plate, something that's going to be about the size or the, you know, like the size of your thumb. Um, avocado, seeds. If you're doing oils, it'd be kind of hard because it's spread, but... You know, if you get the about, idea. About, 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 I mean, about you know, a thumb. Maybe a spoonful, like about the size of your thumb. You know, so maybe it's like two, what would it be, like a tablespoon-ish. Um, you know, peanut butter. And when I'm talking about portioning peanut butter, usually I get one of those goofy clown thumb things. <laughs> Stop. And then... So, no. those are really great tips. Um, when you're out and you're away from a scale, um, palm, fist and thumb. Yeah. Another tip that I like to do is if I'm out and I haven't exact, like I've maybe estimated what I think might be on the menu for the day, um, and I'm not really willing to, at, the, at that moment, plug it into my fitness pal or whatever app that I'm using, I'll often take a picture so I remember what the portions are, proportions are relative to each other, and I can retroactively fill that in or adjust it. If I thought it might be like, um, you know, like six ounces of meat and it really ended up being like four, three ounces of meat, I'll be able to go back and retroactively adjust it because of what I remember taking a photo of before I eat it. And with the, the palm portioning, what we're talking about too, is not everyone measures their food. I talked to plenty of you that we don't, and it's just, you know, like, it's not always necessary, but using that hand method is a great way to portion out your plates and finding that structure for your meal. So you're not overdoing it maybe with one thing or another. Um, so it's, you know, in sense, it's measuring still. You know, if you, even if you don't have a scale there with you, you're measuring because you're eyeballing and looking, you know, saying it's about this much. It's about a palm measurement for my protein or a fist measurement for my for my vegetable or, you know. So it's still a measurement in some regards and any sort of measuring rather than just kind of going in willy-nilly and, um, well, I said willy-nilly. Uh, um, just going in without any regard for like how a plate structure because that's when we can kind of get ourselves into trouble. All right, so let's talk about one more thing which is ways to keep us out of trouble. Um, and Pat brought up a point of specifically about things like peanut butter or um, basically foods that are easy to take your portion and then another portion. Um, <laughs> so this is one that I have totally been a culprit um, of, you know, I've, I've failed at this for a long time until I started with this last tip that we'll leave you with. Um, but if you do have a scale at home or um, you're, you're in a place where you can measure what you're, you're taking out, let's say, let's use peanut butter as an example. Um, a tip that Pat and I have um, started doing regularly is not necessarily scooping out the peanut butter, weighing it on a plate or a whatever, but putting the, the thing of the, the big package of peanut butter on the scale itself. Um, we'll hit the button so it'll kind of, um, it'll zero out the scale with the peanut butter jar on top of the scale. And then taking your spoon or whatever it is, this could be peanut butter, this could be cottage cheese, it could be whatever. 
Um, and then whatever you take out of the bin, take out of the container, it will um, tell you that it's a, a negative 32 grams or you know whatever that unit of whatever the volume that you're seeking um, so it'll measure that and then that's helpful because you've measured what you've taken out of the jar not what you've necessarily put on a plate and then had another scoop on the way while you're putting the jar away yeah or you you take it out of the jar put it on there and then it's still you know yeah exactly what you said because if you put the plate on there and take the peanut butter and put it on the plates or put it on the bread or whatever it is there's still some left on to the on the spoon and I know for a fact that we're not gonna waste that tasty <laughs> peanut butter by just putting it into a cup of water and rinsing it off and doing all that you're probably gonna eat it so it's just adding extra calories there yeah so that's a that's one of the tips that we use uh, we actually do have uh, one other thing because I've been asked a few times um, when it comes to weighing food, when? When do we weigh it? Well, before you eat it first, you know, that's always <laughs> probably the best thing to do. But <laughs> I'm talking about like, do you weigh it after you cook? Do you weigh it before you cook? Is it the same for everything? No, it's not. So there's a couple things that we would say just as a rule of thumb. Um, we are going to treat protein different than we'll treat our fats and carbs. Yep. So with protein, you're gonna weigh your protein after you cook it. Okay, so let's say, name a protein for me. Fish. Fish, beautiful, that's a fantastic protein. You get a lot of healthy fats in there too. Um, yeah, so, or it could be super lean fish too, so I guess it depends. Anyway, I go on. Uh, <laughs> so when you're cooking fish, you would take your piece of fish out, you're gonna put it on the grill or the pan, or in the oven, however you're cooking it, and you're actually going to weigh it after you cook it because it's going to release, you know, some of those juices that you see, some of the, you know, blood or the, you know, the, the stuff that's inside of it, it will release out, but that's not going to contain any of the, the protein that's actually in the, the meat itself. So when it comes to proteins, you want to weigh it after. So if you have six ounces of fish to eat for dinner, you cook it, then you weigh it cooked, and then you throw it on your plate and into your mouth. That would go along with steak or chicken or ground turkey or any any other source of protein that you're um, uh, that you're looking to to add to your meal. Mm -hmm. What about mm -hmm. veggies or fats? So veggies you are going to weigh before you cook it because uh, a carbohydrate. If you think about the word hydrate, there's water in it. So it's not actually containing those, uh, you know, like the, um, it could actually does contain the, like the minerals and everything like that. So like if you have ever seen a cup of spinach before you cook, <laughs> compared to after you cook, you know, it's, it's pretty small. So with carbohydrates, you actually weigh it before you cook it. And that includes uh, the starchy stuff too. So, for instance, a baked like a, let's say a baked potato or a sweet potato in our case because we have them here, and it's I'm just thinking about sweet potatoes. Uh, so, sweet potato. What I normally do is I will take the sweet potato that's raw, it's not cooked yet, and I'll put it on a scale. And generally speaking, depending on you know what brand of sweet potato you get, and you can. Um, I think it's about 130 grams of sweet potato is a portion size, so it's the one portion. So what I do is I put the, the potato on the scale, I weigh the whole thing. <clears throat> so let's say it weighs 390 grams total, the, the sweet potato. So at 130 grams a portion, that's going to be three servings. So it's three servings in that sweet potato. Then when you cook it, you're gonna weigh the whole thing again. And you're gonna notice that the weight drops. So instead of weighing 390 like it did before, pre-cooked, it's going to weigh 345. I'm just making numbers up, I don't know. Every, everything's a little bit different. So, but if you had three servings at the 390 and now it weighs 345, so your serving size cooked is gonna be 115 grams. 115 times that three servings to make that 345. That's how I kind of came and got that. 
Um, so Pat's pretty good at mental math. Um, I think something to, to take away from this is if you think about the size of an onion or mushrooms beforehand, we have to remember that we're weighing them before we cook them. When we cook them, they may cook down, but we're still, uh, we're not re-measuring them at that point. We're still going with the size and volume that you measured when they were pre-cooked. Yep. And fat's the same way. So when you're cooking with, let's say, olive oil, yes, you have to measure that. And yes, you have to count that. First off, um, I've known people that don't or didn't know that until later. So I want to get that out there. So if it's oil or butter or whatever you're using to cook in, you would actually weigh that beforehand. So when I, you know, let's say I'm having a steak and I'm putting olive oil in the pan so it doesn't stick. You know, two tablespoons or however much in grams you're using, however you want to weigh it, um, it usually says in the back of the bottle, um, you put that in there, but you weigh before because you can't really weigh it after, <laughs> you know, because it always, it soaks in. Um, so that's the rule of thumb with fat. Um, the same thing, you don't really cook a whole lot of other ones. You might roast like almonds or that kind of stuff, but um, I don't, they don't really change in weight. So. All right. Well, hopefully this is not too much information, but plenty to at least get started and um, some tips and tricks for us that we use when we're measuring food, whether we're at home, we're away from home, we have a scale, or we're um, uh, just working off of different proportions that we've learned over the course of time. Mm -hmm. We're here to offer some advice and some tips and tricks, but we're also looking to learn from you guys. So if you have other resources or things that you've learned over time that have been helpful for you as you're measuring your food, let us know. We're happy to, to learn um, and just try them out ourselves. And if you have a topic that you'd like us to talk about, these will the live ones will happen frequently, or not frequently, uh, no, every so often. <laughs> You'll get videos. But if you have a topic that you want us to discuss, let us know. You can message us if you don't want, you don't feel comfortable for everyone else seeing it, or you know, there's, you know, it's no such thing as a stupid question. So you can message us yeah. on Instagram or on Facebook, whether it's uh, through Messenger. You can always pro provide a comment here. You can email us through our website, habitsc.com, um, or if if we find a topic that came up. Um, uh, anonymously through our conversations, uh, whether it's through our Axiom program or not, um, that we think are help is helpful to share, helpful for other people to learn. We'll be, we'll be glad to elevate some of these questions and hopefully provide some kernels of goodness. Yep, and it'll be anonymous, so it's not like your name will get burned. <laughs> so. All right, well, thanks for spending your Friday evening with us, and now I'm hungry. Yeah, we're gonna eat, <laughs> but we're gonna measure well, protein after. We're going to measure our food. Come on. <laughs> All right. So um, we will see you hopefully soon. And you all have a great weekend. Sounds good. Yeah. Bye, you guys. Bye.